Snow Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, Yamaha, Revs Your Heart, FXR Racing, celebrating 25 years of speed, and by iPone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. MBRP has always been a leader in power sports performance. From cars to diesel trucks to side-by-sides and ATVs, they cover it all. But it all started with snowmobiles. And from day one, the company has supported snowmobile racers of all kinds. From drag racers to water crossers, cross country, and of course, snow cross. The crew at MBRP understood that if it works on the track, it'll work on the trail. Today, I sat down with Jared from MBRP to talk about racing being a cornerstone of the MBRP brand, how racing affects trail products, and to get to know their highest profile Canadian race team. MBRP is a very grassroots, enthusiast-based company. You know, we've always kind of had that racing aspect about the company, and I think that's really what makes us unique as a company as a whole. Everything from Martin starting off when we founded the company, building those B&B Eliminator exhausts, all the way up to now where we have a full extensive lineup through automotive, you know, and power sports. Whether it's Ultra 4 racing, snowcross racing, off-road, anything like that, I mean, that's what we've been about since day one, and you can see that even through till today. I think uh, it comes back to, we used to have, use that tagline and still do today, is the four enthusiasts by enthusiasts you know what it's something that we can look for at each step of the process when we build exhaust to kind of carry that through to the end product and the consumer and we have a very good line of communication with the end user because we understand as enthusiasts of ourselves what the product needs to look like in 1997 AJ and I decided that we wanted to try racing snowcross obviously in the beginning we were heavily supported by the family business Supertracks magazine but we were also extremely fortunate that through the contacts and partnerships we developed through the magazine we developed a great list of sponsors as well. The team was called Lester Brothers Racing, and from day one, MBRP was on board, supporting our racing effort with high-performance exhaust for our mod sleds. In fact, Lester Brothers Racing was one of the very first snowcross teams MBRP ever sponsored. Back in those days, a semi-pro or pro rider could race in up to four classes each day, start to finish of a two-day weekend. You could have a fleet of up to four different race sleds, one for each class, including 440 fan, 440 liquid, 600 liquid, and open mod. From day one, our mod sleds were outfitted with MBRP exhaust, and in our 10-year careers, neither of us ever lost a race due to an exhaust failure. Well, I mean, supporting Snowcross has always been something we've done since day one. I mean, obviously, you know, as, as supporting the Lester brothers from early on in the Snowcross days, that's kind of what we've been built on, and we've carried through that through the whole process. The last 25, 26 years we've been in business. Well, I think it really just solidifies our name in the general public that we have that racing attitude and that racing kind of flavor to our brand and showing customers that, hey, this is a proven product because we have that attitude with the racing series, with the racing circuit and the athletes to back it up. That's kind of essentially raises the bar for us in the market. One of the great things about working with MBRP is that they wanted our feedback about their products so that they could continue to develop them and make them better, lighter, and more durable. If we had a problem, they would fix it. If we had an idea, they wanted to hear about it. Because like, I mean, we obviously we value all of our relationships with our athletes and everything too, and the feedback we get from all of them is, is something we you know, hold close to the chest through our design process. In 2001, AJ and I both won Canadian National Championships, he in the semi-pro class and I in the pro class. The truth is, neither of us could ever have achieved these results without our incredible sponsors, and that of course included MBRP. Snow Tracks is brought to you by the Regents of Quebec by the Sea. Discover our ride ideas. For decades, MBRP has been a championship-winning brand in every form of motorsports they compete in. Today, that winning legacy is being carried on in Canadian snowcross by Black River Racing.
So my dad started uh, Black River Racing up when we first started racing when I was four. So I always looked up to all the pros like Ian Hayden and even the States guys like Tucker Hibbert racing. So I would race uh, the 120s class, moved up to like the 300 class and the 550s and moved up to junior. Once I hit junior, I started having a track at my house here. About maybe seven years ago now, we started buying uh, snow making equipment and then we bought a groomer and then we just make a track at the backyard there. I had practiced with all the Canadian pros here, which really made me the speed I am today. So this year with MBRP on board, I'm gonna go out there and prove to everyone that MBRP is the proven product of racing. We've always had a close relationship with Black River Racing. I mean, myself on a personal level through Snowcross Racing, but um, you know, these guys are a very good team in partnership with a lot of good relationships that we have, like Royal Distributing, you know, Stud Boy Caliber, other guys that we've kind of heavily involved with as well. Um, and it just made sense from you know a personal and business relationship. Well, Brock from Royal Distributing went to Jared from MBRP, and well, I've known Jared for a long time. He used to ride snowmobiles here and I'd always try and race him around the track here. So our relationship is good with us, but uh, MBRP partnering with them, they're proven on the track. Um, well, I think it's, it's quite simple. I mean, being a part of a team that's, you know, Jake being a two-time CSRA championship is definitely, you know, something that we're very well aligned with too and to continue our success as well as his throughout the future of Snowcross is something that's very, very important to us. And also just working with a professional team like with sponsors such as Royal Distributing that you know is a very good supporter of our brand. It all just interconnect and works very, very well. So our, our relationship with Black River Racing, I mean, has been on for many years, again, as I mentioned personally, but again, it's more recently that we've uh, worked together on a professional level. Uh, in supporting Jake in, in the series. But again, this works as really well as a, a good testing grounds for us, you know, proving that our products are, are here to work, here to perform, and that's something that we can take to our customers too. You know, there's a ton of investment they get, these guys have here from snowmaking machines to groomers to, you know, tractor trailers and everything you need to really have a full-fledged race team. Guys like that aren't gonna just put their money in a brand that's not gonna win those races. I mean, nobody does all this effort just to kind of be average. You know, racing is one within seconds and we've all seen, you know, everything from a start, getting a whole shot, all those little things add up to either winning or losing. And, you know, with Jake going on to a year wanting to go his, on his three-time championship, this is something that matters to him a lot. And uh, this is why they choose MBRP to give them that edge. Like, MBRP's exhaust is so much lighter than the stock exhaust. MBRP puts countless amount of hours into making the sled go faster with horsepower with the can. With more horsepower, obviously, you're gonna go faster on the track. The feedback with MBRP, if I, if I find something wrong with the exhaust, I'm gonna go to them and they will listen to me. With There's a lot of companies out there that won't do that, but MBRP will go and they'll look into the problem. So yeah, it's the development and everything we're doing here at the track to really kind of carry through the rest of the MBRP line, such as our trail exhaust, our quiet series, that you've seen kind of evolve over the past couple of years. And again, it's that testing, those little, you know, extra design time or R&D development, we're putting focus in those other products to really make them better and set us apart from the competition. So again, as I mentioned, race series, we're on a closed track. So this is kind of where that's allowed, but other areas that allow you to change your exhaust or go to our trailer quiet series, just know that that same R&D process has gone through into those products as well, so you know what you're buying is a proven product. MBRP partnering with them, they're proven on the tracks, gonna put me in position to win championship. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. In the past, traction discussions would have never come up over low horsepower mid-sized sleds. But in the day and age we're living in, three-quarter size sleds are pretty abundant. Now I'm not talking about five studs per pitch and eight inches of carbide in lower horsepower smaller sleds. But there is huge benefits to sending a rider out with the right amount of grip both front and rear. And with sleds like the Arctic Cat Blast, Yamaha Venom, and Polaris Indy Evo, there's a lot of riders who could benefit from a little extra confidence. With a sea of options out there when it comes to traction, I've looked to Woodies who are innovators in our industry and who provide a really simple to use and easy to understand online traction guide. 
The online guide will take into account your exact sled, the type of rider that you are, and then tailor your needs and provide suggestions for studding patterns, carbide lengths, as well as the proper quantities and item numbers to get the job done. Woody's recommends 96 studs down the center of the track with either a single washer or a double stack pattern. But for today, we're gonna just use the good old single washer. The nice options from Woody's are the stud guides. It lays right over the track and then you can go to town with a marking pen knowing that you're getting the right spacing and you won't be drilling where you shouldn't or causing harm to the track. The studs that Woody's recommends for this sled are the Gold Digger Traction Master. Now the lug on this sled is only 0.91 of an inch, so we don't need a really tall stud. This Traction Master is 1.075 inches tall. The Evo uses a two-ply, 121-inch long track, so the Gold Digger Traction Master works perfectly here. It features a one-inch wide base, so it won't pull through, and has a 60-degree carbide insert at the top of its hardened steel structure. These studs are also designed with a special base shape that actually pinches the track rubber into the rounded recess on the base, acting almost like a beadlock on a tire. Its purpose is to keep the stud in the track even if you encounter abusive conditions where other studs may tend to pull through. The kit that I'm installing today comes with a standard round washer, but if you want a double washer or even a single washer, and then you can get both of those in multiple colors, you can do so so you can customize your ride. Woody's even offers this cool angled washer that'll actually give the stud better penetration into the snow. We've installed 96 studs in our Evo track, and it's important to note that 96 studs is more than enough to help add that extra level of confidence for newer, younger riders. Once we finish up, we have a young lady who's anxious to get out and see how the handling of this Evo has changed. So I better get the rest of this balanced traction package finished up. Now I need to make sure that I'm not causing the sled to push in the corners because inevitably when you add studs, a deeper lug, or even a longer rail, you're gonna cause the sled to wanna drive through the corner or what in the snowmobile industry we refer to as pushing. And the way to do that is with a proper carbide. I have two options to choose from here with me. The first is what Woody's recommends, and that's the Trailblazer 6-inch carbide runner. It has six inches of carbide insert and a single round host bar, and will have the ability to match the traction out back in a balanced package that won't allow the studs to overwhelm the skis in the corners. The second option that I have here is if you find your sled darting or wandering a bit in other single runner grooves on the trail, a carbide like this four inch dually can help to solve that problem by cutting two separate tracks per ski. There's a total of four inches of carbide on each blade, and because they spread out the load, there's less pressure on each carbide insert, causing them to last a little bit longer. Now, I told you earlier that I had an anxious lady waiting to get this sled out on the snow, so I better do just that and let her tell us exactly what she thinks of the upgrades we put on her ride. My old sled, which was the Freestyle, was pretty fun. I had a hard time giving it up, but now that I'm riding the Indy, I noticed before that it was getting really slippery because it didn't have any traction on it, and it, I didn't feel as much confident on it as I did with the Freestyle, which had studs, carbides on it. So now a year later, while I'm on the Indy Evo, the engine's a lot bigger, I'm riding a lot more confidently, but one thing that I noticed was the traction was not the best. I was always sliding, and it just wasn't very controlling for myself to ride aggressive, because, you know, I like to rip on the corners. I like to really ride it. So now with the studs and the carbides onto it, I'm riding a lot more confidently, and it's a lot more safer, because, well, it, there's traction. So now I'm riding a lot more aggressively along the corners, and I'm just having way more fun. Is it too good to be true? I want this so much, but... In the off-road industry, Polaris is number one by a large margin for a couple of very good reasons. First, they build the industry's best vehicles in the majority of categories. They're always taking vehicles that are class leaders and completely redoing them to be even better. In a nutshell, Polaris never stops competing with themselves for that number one position. I'm stuck in the The philosophy of beating yourself at your own game has been adopted on the snow side as well, and that constant progression of improving vehicles a year after year is what ended up giving us last year's Snowtrack's real-world sled of the year, the Indy XC137. 
Now we have the Matrix, and one can only be left to wonder, is this yet another step up in terms of ride and handling over the axis? And if so, how will the competition ever catch up? For 2021, there are really only three different Matrix models, the NDXC Launch Edition, the Assault 146, and the VR1, all based on the same platform, but with different configurations. The VR1 is a top of the line setup, not just in the Matrix lineup, but the entire 2021 model lineup as well. It's ultra premium and includes ultra premium features like Walker Evans Velocity Shocks front and rear, a carbon fiber overstructure, and the more than impressive 7S display. What's truly most important about this sled though is not what stuff it comes with, it's how it performs on the snow. The actual front end of the Matrix, the suspension and bulkhead, are the same as on the Axis platform. The only real change to the front end are the sexy new forged spindles, but their geometry is the same as the old extruded ones, so they're mostly just for looks. Out back, you'll find the very same Pro CC skid frame as what was found in last season's Indy XC137. No changes at all. But before you start griping about this, let me just say that I think this was a great move by the engineers at Polaris, and here's why. The Indy XC137 was by far the best riding and handling sled on snow in 2020, so there really wasn't any need to mess with it. But due to a list of changes that happened elsewhere on the Matrix, this setup rides and handles even better than last year's XC. It corners insanely flat, yet still retains all the light, predictable, and confidence-inspiring handling traits we loved about last year's Indy 137. Simply put, it is the easiest sled to ride fast ever, full stop. When you combine that stellar handling with its incredible ride quality though, there is literally nothing bad to say about this sled in terms of ride and handling at all. Part of the secret to this incredible ride and handling is the ergonomic package that's made possible by all new bodywork, gas tank, and seat. The seat is one inch lower, but you won't notice that. It's also three inches narrower where it meets the gas tank and you will notice that, but in a good way. Maneuvering around this sled is pretty much effortless. The seat does look narrow, but it's actually very comfortable. However, it's this narrowness that allows you to simply roll your cheeks from side to side when you want to lean in the corners. At first, you won't even realize you're doing it, but if you pay attention, the ergonomic trickery here becomes quite apparent. The entire cockpit on this sled is also new, and it feels only slightly different than an Indy XC, so it takes no time to get used to at all. What does take some getting used to though is all the new controls and features. This left-hand switch gear, for example, is all new and it's quite sexy if I do say so myself. It controls not only your high low beam and those incredible climate controlled hot grips, but also the 7S display, which is a technological marvel in itself. The features and customization options combine to give you the easiest to use and easiest to read display in the industry. As I said before, the Matrix bodywork is all new, but it also includes some trickery you might not see at first glance. The panels are incredibly easy to remove with just three quarter turn fasteners. Gone is the rubber strap. The whole top pod now comes off effortlessly with just two Zeus fasteners, and there's less wiring to disconnect because the key is now mounted above the gas tank just below the handlebars. While the bodywork is smaller in every dimension, it still offers better wind protection than an Indy XC. This is thanks in part to this large gauge pod up top. But this gauge pod is more than just wind protection. The 7S display hides a massive storage bin that can hold up to five pairs of goggles, or a small dog or cat or gerbil or whatever you got. More storage can be found under the removable seat as well. And this just goes to show how far Matrix engineers went to address the concerns and requests they heard from real world riders. So let's get back to our original two questions. First, is the VR1 137 a step up from last year's Indy XC 137? Yes, it absolutely is. I'm not at all afraid to make the bold proclamation that this is, hands down, the best handling snowmobile ever made. It's also comfortable and rides great. It's warm, it has the highest tech features in the industry, and in my opinion, it looks dead sexy. So to answer the second question, how is the competition ever gonna catch up? Honestly, I have no idea. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by 
MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap. And by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button. And we upload new content every week, so if you don't want to miss out on any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe so you get notifications whenever something new pops up.